Well, welcome to the Raise Up Podcast. I'm Athena. I'm Charlie. And we have Paul Yitty with us today, and this is episode 16. And uh, I'm really excited about this episode because Paul has amazing insight into managing all of these different diverse groups. And uh, I think that you're going to really enjoy this one. So, Paul, why don't you tell us like how, how this whole thing got started for you? Paul's the man. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so, um, hi, my name is Paul. Uh, I think it was in 2015. Um, I had just left Nashville and I came up here because I was with um, a managing company for shows that we were traveling because, um, of course, I'm a singer or was. Amazing singer. You still sing. Still, 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 still is. still sing. <laughs> Yeah, but um, when I came here and the decision was to um, be with my family and to hang out with them and spend more time with them because I've been away for so long during the military and all that. And um, when I did do that decision, I got here and I'm like, man, what do I want to do for work? I, you know, I need something to do. So my aunt, if you guys remember Lucia, she yes. was um, one of yes. the managers here. And I was like, hey, are you guys hiring? And she said, yeah, we were, we're actually looking for uh, dispatchers. And in my head, I'm like, man, I have zero experience for, you know, that. But I was like, I can. And she was saying, oh, we can train you. There's someone that will. Um, and this was actually BAC is actually my first real job away from when I left high school in Samoa because I joined the military right after high school. And how long were you in the military? for? I was in the military for three years. Okay. Um, with one deployment and then out in the real world I just I so back to um, asking my aunt and so she turned in the application and um, I was brought on and you know who would have ever thought that the office environment was going to be my you know path in life so I was nervous but then it turned out that um I don't know if it was true or not, but they told me that I was one of the quickest to pick up the whole dispatching thing. Oh, you're one of our best hires, um, Paul. <laughs> and, and so, like I said, whether it's true or not, I, I believed it and I ran with it and decided to make it the best I, I can. Um, we told everybody that in the third week, Paul. <laughs> Thank you for taking that on. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was thrown, you know, I was uh, then thrown my own shift after like the first couple of weeks with that being told to me. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, this was back in, you said what year? 2015. Okay. Yes. So it's... We're nine years. Nine years ago, mm -hmm. which the BAC organization was a very different organization yes. back then. So dispatch wasn't um, as diverse as it is today. Oh yeah. It was, those were the fun times, the times of the handheld radios. When I think back on all that, um, there's many different... Uh, things that I could think of and first would be I'm thankful for the people that I've met since then and I'm thankful that my aunt worked here because she was pretty much like my gateway here and um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do outside of music um, after I was pretty much done with it um, and I'm glad I did which is why I um, I'm grateful and I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't redo anything. Um, this this job has taught me so much. Everything from you wouldn't have heard me, or if you were to talk to me back then, this is not the English that I had back then because, of course, customer service and learning to talk to different people. And I feel like my English has gotten so much better and you would never think that I speak another language better than English. So... Um, you know, fast forwarding, I mean, because I remember when you came on mm -hmm. and of course we have this vision of like raising people up into yeah. these other places, but you've taken on a special role here yeah. in particular. And really it's this like um, you, you have figured out how to lead generations that are 40 years older than you. Mm -hmm and generations that are like 15 years younger than you. And what I mean by that is that we've got the, the airport team that we hire on at 16 and you have really 
figured out how to gain the respect and to get these uh, Generation Z to follow you <laughs> in these remarkable ways. But yet you have the respect of like the baby boomers that work here. Mm -hmm. When you say something or you tell them and you're answering their question, they're like, okay, you know. And that's what I find particularly fascinating. And you mentioned like the way that you communicate yeah. with, with English. It's like you've developed this communication between these individual groups that is just fascinating to me. And so could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, so, okay, let's, for example, the, uh, let's just start with me personally as mm -hmm. a person. Personally, if you were to hang out with me, if you were to see me, or if you're friends with me on Facebook or the social medias, I'm naturally and I'm just a naturally bubbly, you know, high energy. jokester, high energy. Yeah. Like I, I look for every reason to find the goodness in anything. If someone comes to me sad, or if I go to a place that has this very dull energy. I'm gonna be the center of attention and it's not because I I want to for myself it's because I know what I can bring and I know how to adapt to what I um, the environment that I have put myself in um, and I think being the age that I am is a perfect like centerpiece yeah. for the older um, folks that work here and then the younger people because um, I'm freshly 30 in my 30s and I feel like um, I am slowly moving away from my young self and now I'm introduced to the you know the older generation which was which I was around and being Polynesian I um, there's a huge um, teaching of respecting your elders so I know what I have to do to respect someone um, in order to get respect back. But in my mental is that um, this is how I would want someone to treat me when I'm older. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. Like for example, uh, we have the Polish gentleman that I've worked with since the beginning of time here. When I first got here, um, here comes ZB, you know, and my first initial reaction was, you know, I was what, 22, 20. Um, my first initial reaction as a young person is, you know, I'm don't talk to me like that. Or what is what is his problem? But then I thought to myself, let me just give it the benefit of the doubt and mm -hmm. just get to know this person first um, and just ask around. Um, and then Jessica at the time, um, you know, they were telling me, oh, that's just him. That's just how he is. It's just Zibi. You'll really know when he's mad. And I was like, how do you know that? He's quiet. <laughs> and so I take in, I, and then it's like a, I have a mental book of writing down each personality that I come across, not just here at work, so that I know how to change up my personality um to match this person it's like meeting them halfway kind of a thing so it's establishing um my end goal in treating people is to make sure that they are comfortable with me so if i meet someone that is constantly wanting things to be right wanting to, wanting things to be you know smooth all the time mm -hmm. um, for example him I would get everything ready that I know he's gonna nitpick about so that when he comes in, there's nothing for you to complain about. Or there's nothing um, for you to ask because I yes. already anticipated your needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I I dug a jokester out of him um, and I figured out that part of him and um, I would talk about certain things that he's interested in, which is barely anything, but I found them. <laughs> You know, um, that's really fascinating because what you're talking about is like <laughs> typical mirroring techniques yeah. and listening and seeking understanding yes. without judging. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's fascinating how sometimes we jump to conclusions about things and yes, we just assume time. that because uh, this person is talking direct at me mm -hmm. that they're being offensive when really that's where they come from mm -hmm. that's their culture yes from the country that they lived in mm -hmm. and there, there's just I, I don't think that there's a lot of talk 
around these days about how, yeah, it's true we all have different backgrounds, but really culturally, that's that's playing in. We have people from all over the world working for us, yeah. all these different cultures. Yeah, I think that's what made it easier for me is because I'm, you know, I'm from a culture as well too. So, but at the same time, I've been, I've lived in in Samoa and also I've spent half of my life here. And so it's like there's this understanding of the way of life here and an understanding of the way of life that's not from here. So um, knowing when to apply that um, and what situations to apply your your culture to, um, that's when I would step away from, if it's a professional thing, like if it's work related, I'm gonna give it to you the way that work is supposed to be given. Um, and if it's anything, if, if someone comes to me with a problem that I can relate to, um, you know, it's it, then I just step away from the whole supervisor or the management position and I step into it's me you can it's talk to like me. a coach position yes. it's me like you know what's up man you know are you 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 doing okay instead of um just ignoring someone when there's obvious you know issues or something that they they could be going through or just they just need a like one of my uh um what do you call those love uh love, love languages, languages is uh words of affirmation you know if someone comes up to me and says you know what you have the best hair that i've ever seen that i'm gonna have the best day in the world even if it's not true but you told me that's what right. you think um and another example is um oh you have the best hair in the world you know what i'm gonna i'm not gonna sleep tonight hey, man, you're there. <laughs> um and another like barb for example um after knowing her for so many years if there's one thing that you could compliment her on it, you know, to make her smile, even if she's having a bad day is Barb, I love your hair today. You know, it's poofier than yesterday. And then instantly it's like, there's a, there's a brightness in some, in her eyes. Then she'll go to tell you about, yeah, well, I spent, you know, an hour or two hours on it this morning. And, and as soon as they do that, I've hit the jackpot that's it so um and i'm just going on and on but you know paul one of the things i really see with you especially with our dynamic crew that we have mm -hmm. uh, the ambassadors at the airport is that you're able to uh, connect with the 16 year olds and i think mm -hmm. so many people connect to you because you've been on so many youtube videos you've been on so many yeah. different ones in there with your singing and you'll do the tiktok video with them <laughs> and, and you will do videos with them to inspire them and get them yeah. going and they really appreciate that about you they yeah. really look up to you and and, and we have a, a a fairly decent size of polynesians that work for us too yes. yeah. and you know they all have the most huge respect for you huge i mean and you have respect for them and it really works out well because it's so funny is when we get around a whole bunch of polynesians they all start talking about i'm like english english you know because i can't understand what they're saying they laugh yeah. like oh it's okay boss you know it, it it's it's very um uh, very well you're very well respect with those and especially the kids they always love working with you and i say kids we're teaching these kids to become new adults and yeah. you really you're inspiring them to mm -hmm. do that because they see you and they see where you've moved up now and into a management position. I mean, you start off as a dispatcher and then went to a supervisor and we've asked you for years to try to get the <laughs> management team. And then finally you came to us and said, hey, I'm ready and I'm glad that you're taking that next step. But it's going to be huge for these uh, these other team members that we have and yeah. everybody else here. And, you know, it's just you have that quality about you and you're always chipper i mean to see you down is very i think in the nine years it may be it'd be a half a dozen times i've ever seen you where you weren't just on cloud nine so you <laughs> always bring that high energy to our team yeah. and they need that and we yeah. really do we need that energy because remember that we're the first people they see and what's going on and we're going to probably set the tone for them yeah. so we really want to set a good tone for them so tell me how you do that with the teenagers too i mean how's that um and, and we, I say, I say, teenagers. We don't have just teenagers at the airport too. No, no. We have everybody from every spectrum all the way up until the '60s up mm -hmm. there working there too. So you have a very diverse company there. A little bit more than here at BAC because because yeah, the younger because mm -hmm. we don't let them drive here. So we only get some of the younger people working as DGMs, yeah. works as just uh, grounds maintenance and stuff like that. So tell me how that is. The airport is my. Uh, 
is grounds for me to apply everything that I have here and I get to mix my personal personality with it um, because like you said it's not just um, the teenagers that work there or fresh out of high school we have um, I think the oldest person there is in their 60s and I think um, Frank might be in his 70s now and they've been with us for a long time yes and they're such loyal great employees mm -hmm. And so when I when I go there and I just observe their environment and now I'm looking at it as there's these kids that work with these adults that are, you know, they qualify to be their grandparents. Sure. And um, even some of the great grandparents. <laughs> yes. I so for the kids um, portion of it, uh, I want them to because I, I, I freshly remember what it's like you know, being on my own for the first time and getting a job for the first time. Uh, I want them to feel comfortable to where they see me. Um, if they see someone that's in the leadership team come there and it's just, hey, you're not supposed to be doing that or sure. this and that. My my greeting is, hey, what's up, man? I, didn't you go to school with my little brother? And then they were like, "Oh my God, you're that you're that guy." And I go, "Yeah, you're I'm that singer. guy, man. You're that Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy. You know, that's it's just talking, starting conversations. And I know there's this whole thing about um, kids nowadays. That's like the that's like a thing now that's being thrown at the generation is oh these kids, these kids. I'm like, well, we were once kids too, and um, I remember growing up. They were my my elders and my uncles and aunts were saying stuff about dang you kids and i'm like well i i mean i'm still freshly away you know grown up now so i want them to be comfortable enough to wear that um to know that this is a place because of course a lot of them this is their first job like yeah. i said i want them to know that this is a place you train yourself to get to know what it's like to get along with your co-workers the people that you work with discover who you are as an adult um and then when i put into the equation the older folks that work there um it doesn't matter where you are even if it's work as long as everyone understands that you're here to do a job and to make a living for yourself and to provide and start providing for yourselves and for those who have been in the workforce for a long time to continue to provide for your family as long as they understand that that's what it is and it's a job and it's a business, it's a professional world, there still should be some some sense of this is also a place that I could feel like I'm comfortable with and I can call my family away from home, you know. And so I want them to, I started to talk to them and I also talked to uh, the older guys, um, hey, how, what do you think? I want to hear what they think about working with the younger generation. And I want to hear about the younger generation's input about working with the older folks. They're, so if the older folks would say, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't like this because they're always on their phones um, and they're on the computer. But then I use that against them also because when I would offer them a position saying, hey, what do you think of being a dispatcher? I would get hit with a, oh, I wouldn't know how to use a computer. And so then I would give credit to the, the younger generation and have the older folks understand, hey, this position was um, better suited for the, this, this individual because they are familiar with the technology. And uh, what we're looking for is that. But also what we need to go along with knowing how to use a computer is someone who has a good head on their shoulders yeah. that's able to respect you so if you give me your you know we'll give them a 30-day trial you know trial in this position and just the opinions of people uh doesn't matter who you are where you come from how old you are your opinions as long as you feel like your opinions are being heard and used not just I'll talk to you every day about the same thing. Um, and it could be opinions of what's going on in real time at work or like a long term goal. Do you think I could get to learn how to use a computer or um, do you think you could get my uniforms that I ordered two weeks ago? Um, and it's just establishing um, 
a trust between them. So when I talk with the kids, it's I'm using the terms that they use nowadays, like, you know, oh, <laughs> you're a McDonald's that you're eating. That looks kind of bussing, huh? You know, <laughs> or uh, that's fire. But then when I talk to like the older folks, um, you know, they they would talk about I'd play music on purpose um, in in the environment. I'd play older music that I knew I grew up listening to with my grandparents and my dad and my mom. And then I'd hear something like, what do you know about that song? And exactly. I go, I, it's either I know a little bit, but I know enough for us to start a conversation about right. it. So just it's just finding... Um, it's almost like common ground. Yes, common ground. And yeah. so then you build rapport from there. Yes. But I think mm -hmm. the, the key message here is that this takes time and you have to be curious. You can't come from a place of, oh, you're not going to do it anyway. Or yeah. just shut down and, and close down with this idea that they don't want to work or they don't want to listen or mm. whatever. It's, it's really a, it's a different language speaking yes. with each generation. And we were talking earlier about how we don't use the term bussin', but when we were teenagers, it was like <laughs> rad or um, that's, I mean, we still say awesome and dude, but um, it, it's no different. It's just a different generation of slang, yeah. basically. You know, it's funny looking at some of our, our, well, not say the older generation, but look at our generation of baby boomers and stuff like that. I mean, when I come up to sometimes when they're doing orientations, I'll see people actually with flip phones still. And they're, and, they're, and they're talking about trying to add it up. And I was like, well, that's not going to work, you know. But it's, it's just so interesting because that's their comfortability. And yeah. so yeah. it's interesting how our team has to work with the different comfortabilities as just as we yeah. do in there. Because how you get in our buildings with an app usually, or you have to put a code in, you have to do yeah. that stuff. So it's really trying to bring them up to speed. And then that's trying to go down to where they're at too, to be able to yeah. help them out because they don't want to switch from that razor phone. They don't want to switch from that flip phone. Yeah. I mean, it's comfortable. It, it, yeah. And, and it's they don't care about all the other stuff. They don't care about the internet as much as we do. They don't yeah. care about social media. So we have all these huge spectrums going back and forth. And yes, all and the time we're playing tennis We're we're, we're, it's, we're, a, it's a puzzle piece where the, <laughs> the longer you've done it or the longer that I've gotten to know uh, the employees that have been here for a while, I know ex each one of them has a puzzle piece that I have ready to put in every time I see them. Um, but I also like to warn people that are coming in so that they are comfortable and they know what to expect. For example, back to our Polish friend, right? ZB. Um it's since I know him, um, no one's going to know him the way I know him. Sure. But the best I could do is just give the new party a heads up and give him also, you know, a, a heads up as well, too. As far as if you if you know me and you care about me, you know, be nice. OK, but the heads up I've been giving for years, every time a new driver comes in and is about to train. Hey, by the way, we have a driver. Um, just a heads up. That's just how he is. Okay, it's You'll, not a. He's not. Know. And let me clear really, the record. It's, it's, let me yeah. clear the record a little bit. ZB is one of our top drivers. Yes. He's been with us yes. for a long time. But ZB, as we talked about his accent and everything else that yeah. comes across, sometimes it comes back abrupt, abrupt and harsh, and it's just ZB. And, yeah. and, and he and you know and he sensitive. smiles sometimes yes. into it. You don't know if he's mad or upset, but well, we, that's what that's what I tell them is. If it really came down to where there was a situation that happened and it was brought to me and then we end up having a conversation like for, if someone comes if someone come comes to me with a complaint, I'll listen to the details of exactly what happened. Most of the time I find that the person that was upset at the per, at the at the veteran person is you're telling me but in your statement you told me exactly what you didn't do. So I then would step into like an older generation mindset was sure. like, well, I understand they were frustrated and they probably yelled at you. But if you really think about if you really slow it down, take away the tone of voice and everything. Tell me this. Is he wrong or is he right? Sure. And then instantly it's like. Yeah, they were right, but they could have, you know, been nice Whispered about it. Whispered it to me yeah. instead of used your regular yes. accent. Send me chocolates. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the same time, they told me so, I was doing bad. I, and I think that's what I, I run with all the time is, um, like I said, when we, when we get to learn everyone's different personalities, that could be the, the topic of discussion after I get them to realize that 
the the priority was the, for the job to be done right you know because if you're coming to me with a complaint saying that this person was that and that well there's there's a possibility that this person could have been much nicer had you done and helped them out you know to become a unit to work together to get something done because you know out of the two of you it sounds like you were the ones that you were the one that didn't step up to make the situation better so yes we can have a conversation about him yelling at you or someone raising their voice after but let's go ahead and take care of why you missed your pickup and why you dropped this and that um, you know sometimes it's not that they're yelling it's mm -hmm. that the intense energy yes. that they bring to the conversation mm -hmm. it feels like there's some kind of some it, it, I've heard I've heard people say you're yelling at me yeah. and they're they're not at me but I've heard them say oh they were yelling and I was yeah. right there and I'm like they weren't yelling but I could feel the energy yes. intensity well and some feel, of them are more sensitive than others yes of course so. and I and I think that that's probably a consideration is that yes. you have to know your audience and if that individual is is a is a member of the team but they tend to lean on that sensitive area mm -hmm. that's just waiting to be developed yeah well put this in perspective too we have over 240 employees yes. so when you're talking about intensity with different employees and, and the, their levels are at we're all over the spectrum yeah. i mean from oh, every yeah. walk of earth uh, to everything to every language to every you know possibility we have here you have 240 different personalities that we have to deal with on a day in day in basis and some are easier and some are harder and yeah. some are some are so totally off the radar. Like there's employees that we've had for a long time that we, we I was like, they still work here, you know, because they work one or two days a week yeah. and it's on the weekends or something like when we're not here. So it, it's, it's a huge responsibility that you guys take yeah. on. And I, I, my, my thing is um, after being here for so long and um, I like to share with them the experiences that I've had because once upon a time I was a new employee too. And there was, there's one, um, I mean, you, you, you've gotten to know my family a lot and we have situations and um, like deaths in the family. Yeah. And there's one thing that I told, because um, the question is always now with how long I've been here is, wow, you're still over there? And then I'm like, yeah, what's what's wrong with that? You know, you, you, don't, you don't leave some place if you enjoy a place, sure. you know, and... Um, I think the reason why I'm so just stern on really trying to get everyone, especially the airport, to really take into consideration the benefits of, it's not just company benefits, it's the benefits of who you get to learn from while you're there yeah. and what someone has done for you. A long time ago, um, there was one thing about the company that I did appreciate was you know, you go into a place and I'm, I'm a religious person. And when you come into a company that has forms, 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 and then one of the forms are a prayer request, you know, I feel like a lot of places nowadays don't have that, you know, platform to be able to go to while you're at work to submit something. And the biggest thing that really sold me for continuing to, you know, commit to this company is um and this is not at all to flatter anyone it's it's because i do appreciate it is that there was a day that i put in a prayer request and it had to do with it was either my grandmother or i put in a prayer request and i don't know if you remember athena we were at the old office and you came in and in the middle of me just dispatching the craziness she goes um you you asked if you could pray for me and we took like a two minute i stepped away she stood right over me and put her hand on my shoulder and she prayed for me and um that's one of my all one of my other characteristics or my personalities is that i'm a very emotional person um and when someone does something that lasts a lifetime for you you can only do so you know you can only do what you can to contribute to someone's kindness so that's my takeaway from it is that when i worked for this company it was 
um, my learning grounds for many things and the people that I've met that have come and come and gone. Um, that's they've played a role in making me think the way that I do today and knowing how to separate, you know, each ways of thinking, if that makes sense. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and you look at that, Paul, is how many people back in the day um, have worked for us mm -hmm. and they have gotten another job offer and they've left us and yeah. then they've come back. Yeah. And I remember when you did, you went over to NAC for quite, just a, a quick bit. I didn't leave all the way. You I didn't. Stayed. You were still employed. You were. Yeah. And then we really missed you and said, how can we get Paul back here full time? And I think Jeff is the one that came over there and kind of coursed yeah. you to come back and said, hey, we really need you here. We did. And well, it was more like we wanted you to just have a singular focus. Uh, yes. But well, I, I, it's funny that you say that because what we were talking about early was um, when I left, my mindset was... Um, you know, it, I've been here for a while. Let me try something new to, sure. you know. But for some reason, someone told me, because I was still covering um, two days shift. Yep. until they could get the shift covered. But, you know, like I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. I feel like God told me to not leave all the way because there's something that's going to happen that's better. But I had nothing to do with the airport department. And for some reason, um, Jeff knows this, he saw me on the cameras with everyone rallied in the room at the airport. And I went over there and I talked to everyone. And I just, cause there was no, they didn't have any form of leadership there. And I feel like everyone was, it was during the time of no manager or a supervisor there during the shifts. And so I, you know- We always had floating managers. Yes. So just, yes. Um, but, here comes the dispatcher rallying everyone up. Let's just talk. And I guess I didn't know Jeff was watching the whole thing. And the conversations that I had that day was, you know, were how are, how's everyone doing? What could, you know, what could I take over to the main office? Some concerns that you guys have yeah. um, about here. And then, um, and so I went into telling them, you know what, you know, I kind of went down, you know, to, an ambassador, you know, putting not down as in like, you know, there's, sure. but I put myself in their, their, shoes. their shoes as if I was an ambassador. And I, and I picked out each individual thing that is a benefit of working for that department. And I told them, you guys, you know what? I wish I was an ambassador. You know, you have this office that's made just for you guys away from, you know, the evilness of the airport sometimes, you know, you have this safe haven here, the you know, bright, the bright yeah. sunlight through the big windows and yeah. all that exercise. Yeah. And so I try to butter them up, you know, you know, with things that I would appreciate if I was an ambassador, like where else do I get paid? You know, you have this office to come and they have a McDonald's next there, next to their office. And I mean, and I was saying stuff like, man, I wish I was an ambassador. I just sit in here, play with my phone, wait for my next call to come up. And, you know, you guys have it. You guys have it good here. Where else do you get paid just to hang out sometimes? And then they're like, you know what? You're right. And then instantly jumps back into. But that doesn't mean you guys are not going out to do your daily duties. Right. And then it's like there's this conversation that has begun between myself and the kids like oh yeah yeah you, of course we're doing it and so when they see that i'm talking to them um and we all just connect like yo oh yeah dude you know you're you're all right you know you're not all that or whatever um then they asked who i was and they said oh he's the uh, one of the lead dispatchers over there at the main office and then Jeff, I came back to the office and Jeff was like, yeah, I saw that. What did you do over there? Did you have like, did you brainwash everyone? Everyone was just in the room that day. And then that's how the idea sparked was he called me and he says, hey, uh, so if we offered you the position of uh, ANC supervisor, would you come back full time? And I go, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> so when I was at uh, NAC, Gideon was he found out that I was on America's Got Talent and he wanted to feature me on uh, they have like a storyboard or something down at their main hub in Seattle and they wanted to feature the and the NAC employee of the week or something and do a story set up everything and there was a date for us to do the interview and before that date I decided to f come back to BAC because you know, it's where I was meant to be. And um, honestly, I just, 
like I said, it's not, you know, because we're having a podcast or it's not because you guys are sitting in front of me. If I truly didn't like a place, I would have left a long time ago. But, you know, the point you made about explaining perspectives, Mm -hmm. especially to groups that maybe they're not seeing the positive piece, it's, I mean, I tell my own children, I'm like, if you want to go work somewhere else, find the company that has the best training program. Mm -hmm. Find the company that has exceptional leadership within it and learn from that as much as you can while you're in that season of your life. And mm. that's really, I think, what you're sharing with them is it's it's not just about getting a paycheck. It's also yeah. about who are you surrounding yourself with yeah. over and over and over again. I think that's kind of the reason I was telling you is, wasn't bringing it to just your situation, but how many employees have left us for greener pastures, what they thought, mm-hmm. and they've all come, or a lot of them have come yeah. back and said, hey, really miss my job here and this really wasn't what I thought it was going to be and yeah. it was there and then we've really had a lot of good long-term employees that have been with the company through all of our changes and you go back all the way to your go back all the way to 54th with us yeah. at our office in 54th and I know ZB says he called those the good old days because we'd have like little small barbecues less and things humans. like that yeah less yeah. less people and it was you know a lot it was a lot less to manage yeah. Um, you know, we were we were a much more smaller, closer group. But as we grew, and then we went over to Hundredth, and that really expanded us. I mean, remember all that new space we got? We filled it instantly. You know, we oh, were yeah. like almost full, and everybody <laughs> loved having their own offices and all this oh, new yeah. room. And and now we're in our new building off Hartzell, and yeah. we own this building, and we're not leased anymore. And we did a lot of upgrades and everything. So it's just, it's really neat to see how the employees just really have benefited. Uh, and changing up and, and us up, upgrading things it's too. It's really yeah. seeing people thrive. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, re, I think that's really and the you. raise up message is mm-hmm. how can we give them what they need to thrive and then also give them what they want to? Because mm-hmm. sometimes you don't know what you want. You just know you what you don't want. Yeah, and, and I think that's the missing piece of it too is the ones that have been here for a long time is... Oh. Is that our timer? I didn't know it would make a noise like that. We'll have another section where we're cutting things out. <laughs> that was a timer, ladies and gentlemen. That was a timer. Yeah. I'm going to mute the timer for the next session. So that's my first time using that timer. <laughs> so the the employees really like figuring that piece out of... Mm-hmm helping them because I'm sure that there's individuals that you know this other person and you probably know where their mindset was yeah and you're trying to lead this other person to this like understanding and and perspective yeah around that individual and so you're you're doing this balancing act of what do I need to like get them to but also how can I help them like maybe unpack a little bit of this like sensitivity that they have. Yeah. So they need to know that they've been heard, but on the other hand, they also need to understand that we've got a job to do here. Yeah, and that's what I mentioned earlier is, you know, in the midst of this whole me getting on a level with you, you have to understand that my mission also is for you to understand that if I have to bring a decision up to the management team about you, regardless of, you know, me and you being, you know, being cool or we have a a relationship that we that we have because of how, how long I've known you and all that. When it comes down to the job and a performance wise, as long as you know that I'm someone you can talk to and I'm also someone that could possibly turn in your paper, your final paperwork, you know, that's that's where I want it to stop. Sure. Well, um, that accountability piece yes. Paul, is important because it's almost what allows for balance to happen mm-hmm. so that actual productivity can happen instead of just activity. Yeah. Um, and I think that's my whole approach to the whole thing as far as um, trying to just figure each individual out is, I mean, personally for me in, um, you know, growing up, um, growing up here and then also in in the islands most of the things we we know are stereotypes or stuff that we'd see on tv Mm -hmm. and in my mind is you know 
the stereotype of the big boss is someone that's going to always just you can you're scared to talk to this person you're this person is going to be mean they're expected to be mean to you because but or at um, the very least short yes um and it's like when, you're debunking that yes well i there's i feel like there, there's a good cop bad cop situation going on to where we still need a handful of the leadership team that does that and here comes me the one you know the the least expected one that you you think you could come to me because well i'm not saying it like i'm tricking someone but there's this th this expectation that i want from them not that i need it from them but i want them to be able to have someone at their job that they could go to with anything and that way i could you know i'm It'd i'm the go-to yes i'm sure. the go-to to be able to bring it to the leadership because if there's this stereotype in their head about you know the leadership team this person's a manager that person could possibly fire me and all that um there's at least one or two three people that are able to communicate them because at the end of the day you know not being comfortable at a workplace is going to lead to them not showing up anymore Correct. and i had an example of that at the airport not too long ago where um the older guys that were hired on felt like the dispatcher was being unfair and but it was just a misunderstanding um, because they didn't understand exactly what the order of operation was, which was, you know, that's how I found out also that there could be some retrainings or refreshers that need to be absolutely. done. So the takeaways from each situation was that um, that's what happened is you don't understand the dispatcher could use a reminder just to, you know, make sure that we're treating everyone fair so that they love their jobs and that it's fair or they don't have to love it, but they want to be comfortable to know that this is a place they are going to to provide a living for themselves yeah. and their families and then at the end of it i wanted to you know again like we're talking about make sure that and i i i'd put together a little bit of a script in my head and after we sorted out the whole thing you know i just want you to know that you know you it's not because he he started to feel bad because he the, here comes the stereotype of, oh no, I got someone in trouble. Um, they're I don't want to be a snitch. They're going to get or... fired. I don't want to be a snitch. And I was like, no, see, that's the problem. The problem is you, um, that's what we're trying to get away from is you being comfortable enough to talk to me and knowing that there's an understanding that you bringing this issue to me is because someone is not performing well. But the problem is that you're letting your feelings of feeling sorry or you know of feeling sorry for someone get in the way of you doing the right thing so that was that portion of that to where i needed to make it clear that you know there's no point of you coming to bring me an issue if you're not going to tell me the you know 100 percent what it is that you're wanting to bring forth but also at the end of the day there was just there was this this aura and this energy that i was getting that he wasn't uncomfortable and that he no longer wants to come here if the the people put in certain position aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing then they feel like they're being treated unfairly so my position and my aim was you know i said you know i want you to know that you can always tell me if there's something wrong that you don't like so that we can fix it the big pu puzzle piece was that i'm polynesian and the person involved was also polynesian my focus is that i don't want you to think because i'm polynesian You're and gonna i'm gonna mm -hmm. give them a an okay and there's, let them get away with it yes going on here. you know that um i want to make it clear that <coughs> you know, no, everyone i'm in a position to make sure that everyone is treated fairly. But I'm also gonna try to convey to you that this is how I am as a person. It doesn't matter if you're blue, yellow, purple, you know, you're you're the same as everyone else to me. And whether or not I'm a manager or a supervisor or not, you talking to me and me 
in a in me being in a position to help you, you need to understand that I genuinely mean what I'm saying. Right. So well, we're ambassadors to our own employees. I mean, that's what I look yes. at. Is yeah, we're ambassadors to help them, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that everybody's treated fairly and equally. Yeah. And, and you do a great job at that, Paul, by uh, all spectrums. So yeah. we appreciate that. Paul, if there was one piece of solid advice that you could give somebody who is struggling working with the youth today, mm -hmm. like what would it be? What What's one thing that they could do that would make that situation a little lighter for them? One piece of advice to give to... Hmm. I think just being more open-minded and being more open to changes because um, there's and also being open to you know having conversations with them as if they were you know regular people that you come across every day or or even you know having conversations with them as if there were a friend that is the same age as you are and um, just overall being open-minded because there's so much that's new nowadays that um, some of the um, older generation hasn't really accepted as far as how the generation nowadays is acting. Um, but as long as in the work environment, they understand that, um, I can't really put it into words, but when I have the meetings with them or when I'm around them with everyone in the room, it's, I have this saying that I tell them, once you're clocked in, everyone is the same age, the same, you know, everyone's the same. All equal. Yeah. Um, but there's still, a, you know, there's still some expectations that you know how to respect a, a person. So my advice to um, the older generation that's working with now with the generations now is just to be you know continue to be kind to them continue to motivate them to not fall into this stereotype that's been created for this generation is that like it's that. so hard maybe learn to, from each other yeah learn from each other and you know yeah. that's what i mean by being open-minded uh, is to learn from them and for really, them to know that you they are able to learn from you as well and maybe if that's not your jam mm -hmm. that you put leadership in place to work with those those team members yeah because there's there's some industries that that is their that's their employee that's their that's their team yeah their skill set or their their trade and so it's it's like just be honest with yourself if this is something yeah. that you can't seem to shift your mindset on um, and you're constantly saying things like oh they just don't want to work they don't want to do this they don't yeah. want to do that like instead of staying there and getting that negative momentum that you're really looking to this the space of who can i bring in Mm -hmm. who actually is looking for the positive. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, there you had it. Some secret details from a millennial. Our secret sauce. Yeah. Oh. On how to work with uh, Generation um, Now Y and Z, right? Now Y and Z. It's crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> everybody. But, well, you know, just a finishing, you know, statement is that once you... Once you find, you know, common grounds with people that you come across all the time, I still am learning from everyone that come and go. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, treating each other kindly and being fair. And I'll still send out my warnings to people and as a heads up. But the biggest one is, <laughs> for example, the airport is... You'd rather hear it from me than to hear it from Charlie. Oh. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but it's just, you know, there's a... Is he using you for a bad cop? I, you know, I, it seems like I am. I, I, you know, I go over there and I try to be very, very positive those guys mm -hmm. in there. But it's so funny is there's so many different ones there that I don't yeah. know them. So I feel like I play undercover boss when yeah, I want so to fly the, out. The, story, the stories that, come, that uh, would happen is always like the one you told me about the guy that was like, well, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but it's, uh, you know, um, I, I try to make myself known to everybody and mm -hmm. I am always hello and how are you talking to everybody. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I probably need to get over there a little bit more and just say hello yeah. and bring some donuts or something say hi. 
Thank you, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yes, today, Paul. everything. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, that's awesome. We're, we appreciate you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Episode 16. <laughs>